Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today on this live plan webinar. Um, just to get started, I'm going to be sharing my video, and I just wanted to say hi to everybody. I'm Sabrina Parsons. I'm the CEO of Palo Alto Software, and we are the makers of Live Plan. Um, this is a 30-minute webinar. It's going to be quick. It's not a ton of time, but I also want to respect that everybody has a lot going on right now, and it's definitely, I'm sure, a little bit of a stressful time for all of us running businesses. Palo Alto Software is by no means an enormous business. Uh, we have just under 100 employees, so we are absolutely considered a small business by the SBA's definition of 500 employees or less. And um, I share the stress and the uncertainty of these times with all of you that are running your businesses. Um, we're going to start with a, a little bit of housekeeping. Number one, we are recording this webinar. We will follow up with all of you who have registered for this webinar, and we will send the recording to you and make it available. So if for some reason you need to leave, if for some reason you're having technical difficulties, maybe your bandwidth isn't as well as good, you will get a recording of this webinar. So don't worry about that. Um, if you look at your GoToWebinar control panel, it should be on the right-hand side of your screen. There's some controls there that will allow you to interact with us during this webinar. If you look down on it, there is a little um, arrow that points to questions. If you click that, then you can see all the questions that are being, you can ask questions and then you can see questions that are being answered. We have a team of Palo Alto software uh, employees, the live plan team, um, they're on, they're helping, they're going to be addressing the questions as I talk. If your question doesn't get answered, we will follow up with you. Um, when you get the email of this recording, you can reply to that email, you can ask us any question that you want. And I have also have Laura McComb with me. She is the engagement manager for Live Plan Small Business Users and Customers. And you can see her waving right now. Um, her email is lauren at liveplan.com. She can also be available if you don't feel like your question was answered. And you can go ahead and email her. Um, what we really want to accomplish with this webinar for you is to help you to bring a little bit of certainty to the uncertainty that you're feeling and to help you really um, come up with a financial plan for the next two, three, four, five months. We don't know any of us what's going to happen. We don't know how long we will all be in this kind of alternate reality that we're all in due to the coronavirus. Um, and we don't know the outcome and what's going to happen to the economy and to our small businesses. And I know that's very stressful. I will tell you a couple of things about Palo Alto Software. Um, we are a business that is not virtual, is not remote. We've always all come into the office. We were started in Palo Alto, California, but we actually are headquartered in Eugene, Oregon now. And all... Um, you know, about 100 employees come into the office every single day. Obviously, that's not happening right now. You probably saw when Lauren waved hi. Uh, it doesn't look like she's in the same place that I'm in. I'm in my home office right now. Um, every single one of our employees is working remotely right now. We do have um, voice over IP, so we can take your calls. All our customer advocates, although they're in their homes, um, they're working at 100%. Um, our business is 100% operational right now, here to support you, even though we're all remote. And it's been a little challenging, um, getting used to not being able to see each other and collaborate, but um, we're really working hard. And at the end of the day, the passion that drives me and the passion that drives all of the Palo Alto Software Live Plan employees is helping people succeed in business. That is our mission. That is what we are driven to do. And at the end of the day, that's what makes us happy when we go home from work or, I guess, when we shut down our computers from being at home 
doing our work in this uh, uncertain time. Um, so one of the number one requests I have for all of you is we want to hear from you. How else can we help? Anything that we can do for you to help you during this uncertain time, we'll hear from you. We don't know what that is if we don't hear from you. So I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can do. You can see right here, I'm on the liveplan.com webpage. And actually, I'm going to turn off my video just from a bandwidth perspective. I want to make sure that I can share my screen and I can show you everything that's going on. And sometimes uh, when I'm not on my broadband at work and just on my Wi-Fi at home, um, the video will disturb my bandwidth. So I've turned off my video right now. You're looking at my screen and liveplan.com. I want to point your attention, um, and sorry, a pop-up just came up here. Uh, I want to point your attention right now to the Contact Us. Um, if you click on that, you will see all the different ways that we can uh, help you. There's live chat, there's email, um, you can see our phone number. Please make sure to contact us. We really, really want to hear from you. Um, I'm going to move into Live Plan right now, um, and I'm going to show you in Live Plan um, that we also have a contact us and our phone number right there. So please let us know what you need, how we can help you, because we're here for you. For you, and the more that we understand your needs the more that we can react to them. And that's what we're really trying to focus on right now during this uncertain time for ourselves and for our customers. Now, one of the things that I want to talk about very briefly, and then we're going to jump into the live plan screen right here, and I'm going to show you how to create alternate scenarios, forecasts, and budgets so that you can understand what your business might look like given that things are changing. And given that the change is very fluid and you know, today, Friday, is very different than last week on Friday. And we don't know what next week Friday will bring. Um, all of California is basically on shelter in place. Maybe we will all go there, maybe things will be better. We don't know. So I'm gonna show you how to relieve the stress of the unknown by creating some scenarios that'll help you feel grounded and will help you understand what your business could look like depending on different things that might happen. Um, I'm gonna give you a little tour of how you actually do that, but I'm gonna back up a little bit and I'm gonna tell you that Palo Alto Software has been around for over 20 years. We've been experts in business planning and financial management for small businesses since we were created in Palo Alto, California more than 20 years ago. When I took over the business in April of 2007, it was just as we were sliding into the Great Recession. Um, it was a very uncertain time, very different from what we're facing today. But nonetheless, as I take over Palo Alto Software in April of 2007, all of a sudden it becomes clear that we're moving into this um, pretty serious recession. I had to react and I had to react quickly. At that time, Palo Alto Software sold Business Plan Pro, Windows software. It was a software that we sold and you download it onto your computer and you bought Business Plan Pro and you had your version of Business Plan Pro. We had some upgrade revenue every year when we upgraded and added new features, but for the most part, we had a transactional business. Um, as we moved into the Great Recession, we realized that Business Plan Pro, while a great product for linear business planning, did not give people the tools to actually do ongoing, lean, live planning, and that we really needed a tool for ourselves to understand our runway, our financial forecast, and what we were going to do our, with our business that would better help us do financial management in an ongoing basis. And that's why we created LivePlan. And the methodology behind LivePlan, this idea that you put together, you know, a one page, very quick, high level pitch, a strategic plan, a forecast. You look at benchmarks to see how you compare to other businesses. You have a schedule to keep you on track and make sure you're implementing things. And then you use a dashboard to really understand your actual results. 
in our dashboard, you can connect your accounting solutions. So you can connect your QuickBooks or Xero or um, QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks Desktop, or you can actually use a manual option and you can bring in your actual results. And then you can compare them to your plan. And that's what I'm going to talk about right now. This is what you all should be doing right now. You should be absolutely thinking about how am I doing and what did I plan to do and how am I going to react? So what I have right now is a gym forecast, uh, fiscal year 2020. And if you look at that, um, I'm actually going to go to the revenue area of this gym forecast. Um, and I'm going to hide the instructions, so I'm going to show you how I can do that. So now you guys are all looking at my revenue. I have my club dues. I have fitness class income. Um, I rent some conference space. There's some event income. There's private training. And then this gym sells some logo wear, sweatshirts, t-shirts, exercise pants with the logo. Um, small business, not a big business. You can see the total revenue. Um, for this fiscal year, fiscal year 2020 that we're in right now is half a million dollars. So this is not a $10 million enormous multiple location franchise gold gym type of gym. This is a smaller mom and pop gym. Um, and I wanted to pick a business that people could understand. And I also wanted to pick a business that clearly is going to face some financial uncertainty right now when a lot of people are staying at home and not going to gyms and gyms are feeling like they may be already told they are forced to close like in California or maybe that's just the what they're doing in order to protect their employees and their customers so it's a good example obviously restaurants bars there's lots of different businesses that are feeling the pain right now, the uncertainty. Are customers coming? When are they coming back? What am I going to be doing? So that's why I picked this. Um, I'm going to show you what happens with this plan and how I can actually look at different scenarios. So you're looking at this revenue here. Here's all the revenue that we have. I'm going to jump over here. You see the financial tables, and those are all under here. But these are actually the projected statements. This is what this business is doing. This is the current plan. I'm going to make the assumption that all of you have a current plan. So number one thing is if you don't have a current plan for this fiscal year, this is an absolute necessity. If you need to understand how to create a current plan and you need a little bit more help with that, make sure that you either tell us right now in the question area or respond to the email that will have this recorded webinar because we can do a specific how to make your plan webinar and teach you step by step. This is not what this webinar is about. What I'm going to teach you today is how to think about your business and create different scenarios. So we're in our profit and loss right now. And in live plan in the profit and loss, you can clearly see that I can see all my revenue. I can click on this little arrow, see all my direct costs. I can see all my salaries and wages and really get a big picture sense of my chart of accounts and what my business is planning to do. What I planned last year in fiscal year 2019, what I'm planning for this year and what my plans are for next year. Now, given the situation, it's probably not going to happen. And this gym is not doing so badly. Um, the owner is not making tons of money in salary, and it's actually a husband and wife owner duo, so they only have one salary between the two of them, but then they have profits, and those profits help them have take home every year. And you can see that profits um, in 2019 were 55,000. There's some growth planned in 2020, and you can see that in the revenue. So profits go down a little bit in order to reinvest in the business and grow the profits in 2021. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. You can see I can create a new forecast. I'm going to copy an existing forecast. Right now, for the case of this, I'm going to call this worst case. Now, what I'm going to tell you is that you can do up to 10 scenarios. 
What I want you to think about with these scenarios, it's a way to play with your numbers and understand what you can do with your business, how you can change it, how you can adjust without having to panic and stress out. Don't be afraid of these scenarios. Do one worst case, then do best case, then do one with a different kind of angle on things. Play with these numbers. Every time you create a new forecast, you save your other ones. You don't have to worry about overriding everything or anything, and you can just play with these. The more you play with your numbers, the more you're going to see opportunities and kind of crack the puzzle of what are the drivers in your business and where can you actually change things and make a difference. So we're going to do this worst case scenario, and I'm going to create it. We now have worst case and fiscal year 2020. Now, I'm going to look at the revenue, and I'm going to make some assumptions here. I'm going to assume that I'm not going to be able to keep all the club dues that I have. I'm going to click in here. Um, I've created my club dues as recurring charges because it's a membership, right? It says that right here. Best for subscriptions, memberships, rentals, et cetera. So then I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to see what I've already put into my forecast. So we're in March of 2020 right here, and you can see that, okay? I'm going to assume I don't mess with my March numbers because we're already towards the end of March. I'm going to change my April numbers, and I'm just going to say, right now you can see, this is when my revenue is starting, and these are the new customers that I'm signing up. I'm just going to change that to zero right now. I'm not going to sign up new customers when my gym is closed. I'm not going to have new customers. I'm going to make the assumption that by August, I can be up and running. And so I'm going to leave that, but I'm going to say that maybe I can only get 15 customers because maybe it takes a little bit of time to get things up and running. So I'm going to change that. Now, by September, I'm hoping things are way better. Things can be back to more normal. And I'm going to leave my fiscal year 2021 right now. Then I'm going to go to the next one. Um, I'm not going to change my upfront fee. I'm not going to change my recurring charge. I'm not going to change when. You know, it's a monthly payment. Um, I'm not going to change how many customers I started my plan with, but I am going to change my churn rate. Churn is basically the customers that leave me. I had a 10% constant rate churn, which I'm going to assume is not going to happen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the 10% because that's what I had. And then I'm going to come to these months and I'm going to double my churn. I'm going to assume some of my customers are just going to say, I'm out of here. I need to, I, I can't keep paying this. You're not open. Now we're going to talk about why not all my customers are going to do this because we're going to provide some alternate services. But for right now, I'm just going to assume that for these three months, my churn is going to double, right? This is my worst case scenario here. As I'm waiting for that to come, um, and change. I'm actually going to just quickly go to Lauren and make sure that there's no, I know there's lots of questions. I can see those coming in, but is there anything, Lauren, you think in particular a uh, question that you want to share with everybody that might be good for me to answer for everybody? Um, I am not seeing any um, broad topics uh, necessarily. Um, so no, not, not at this time. Okay. All right, that's great. And you know what, given that we don't have that much time left, maybe I won't uh, interrupt, uh, interrupt again and, um, you know, ask any more. We'll just answer your questions as they come in. And for right now, uh, we'll just look at uh, what's going on here. So I've adjusted my revenue and club dues. Um, I'm not going to obviously have conference space that I'm rest renting, so I'm going to take that. And I'm going to take that down to zero. Um, I'm not going to be able to rent any conference space. I'm going to go in and I'm going to go to my event income and I'm going to adjust that. I'm obviously not going to be able to do any events. So I'm going to adjust my event income to zero. Uh, I'm going to change that right now. And then I'm going to look at um, probably just for right now, leaving the other ones, um, fitness class income, private training, and club dues. And here's why. We're going to, if we have time right now, create a scenario in which I start offering some virtual classes. Um, 
I think there's an opportunity for gyms to give people some normalcy and to reach out to them and let them know that you can not only have some camaraderie and some community, but you can have a schedule. And I'm going to think about all the classes that I can offer that don't require gym equipment, which actually at most gyms is a lot, right? You have Zumba classes, you have yoga classes, you have P90X classes, you have all these classes that just require a room. And if you as a gym can offer your same trainers and fitness instructors and offer some virtual classes, there might be some interesting opportunities for you. So we're going to leave that there. I'm going to go to my direct cost right now. My membership cost, I'm not going to change because it's a percentage. Right now, I am going to make sure that all of you think about your forecast and all your expenses. As much as you can have your expenses tied to revenue, it basically creates an automatic budget for you if you tie expenses to revenue. So for COGS, I've done that. Um, my logo wear is the same thing. Now I'm gonna go into my personnel. I know that I'm not gonna have any events, I'm not gonna have any conference space, and I'm not gonna get in new customers, and I'm going to lose customers faster. So I'm gonna have to do some layoffs, and there's nothing else that I'm gonna be able to do about it. Um, I'm going to, depend on the fact that I'm going to have, um, you know, my employees apply for unemployment and hopefully I'll be able to hire them back again. So here is my staff. It's a group of employees and I'm going to go in here and I am going to reduce my staff from five to one and then zero. And I know that's terrible and it's hard, but I need to save my business. Um, and then in August, I'm going to put it back up to three, and then I'll be up to five, and then I'm hoping to go back to normal. So I'm going to do that and reduce my staff. Right now, you've seen I've reduced my revenue. I've reduced some of my expenses because they're variable. Let's just hop over to the personnel, uh, the profit and loss, and just see right now where we're at. So right now, my net profit is negative $43,000. Now, not great, right? Nobody wants to lose money. But big picture for this gym, it's not terrible, right? Um, it's possible that this gym can get a bridge loan, that this gym can possibly get a line of credit, and actually not make many more changes. And as long as they're providing some actual services and virtual services, for all their members. Members can continue to take classes. Members feel a sense of community. There's schedules. Everybody's stuck at home. Everybody wants to try to be fit and everybody needs some distractions. Maybe this worst case scenario is not as terrible as we thought. So now that's my profit and loss. Let's go to my cash flow and see what that's looking like because it's obviously going to be affected. Now, my net change in cash is bad. It is also negative $46,000. I can't live if I don't have cash. So here's where we go back into our financial tables and we go to our cash assumptions and see if there's anything we can do here. We have our sales on credit and it takes 30 days to get paid. Don't know if we can change that per se. Our purchases are on credit and we're paying in 30 days. We may be able to negotiate given that everybody's in trouble right now and maybe we can pull out days to pay to 45. And maybe that'll help. Um, you know, it, it's something to consider. Now, the cash flow is now negative $47,000 here and the net change in cash. Um, and actually, right now, we're still positive in cash, even though our net cash flow is looking really bad. So we'll go back to our financial tables and get into the revenue here. And we're going to do a little bit more of tweaking this worst case. Uh, our fitness class income, um, we think we can sell 250 units per month. That's what we forecasted, and it's $35 for each unit. These are additional classes that we sell either to members, to non-members. We allow them to come in. We're probably not going to be able to do this. We're probably going to have to go back, and we're going to have to change that. So we're going to change that to varying amounts. 
I'm going to do that same thing that I did where I copy it all across. And now in April, we're going to say um, we're kind of trying to get everything in place and we're not going to be able to sell any because we, we have to get everything in place. And then in May, we're going to see if we can sell virtually a uh, hundred of these and see what that looks like. Um, and maybe in August, uh, we can't quite get back up to speed and we're going to save and close. And maybe that's too aggressive. Maybe we can't do that. What I'm trying to show you here is how you go back and forth. And now our net profit is worse, but, you know, we can still figure out what we need to do. Maybe we need to go in on our financial tables and we need to reduce more personnel and we don't need our trainers and we can reduce it to just our head trainer. This is what you need to be doing right now. You need to be going back and forth and back and forth. Once you finish and you feel like you've got one of your scenarios, you can create a new forecast. And maybe you're going to say, okay, now I'm going to copy worst case and I'm going to call it virtual gym. And I'm going to focus on this one, on doing everything I can to sell virtual gym memberships and really position myself in the community as the health gym that reacted and changed and is providing a place for people to feel healthy. And then I'm going to play with everything here and maybe I'm going to add or change this instead of fitness class income, I'm gonna call it virtual class income. And I'm gonna be able to change things and go back and forth. So really going back and forth and adding scenarios and understanding, okay, what am I really doing? How am I going to make this all work? I wanna also come over here beyond our cash flow um, maybe it's going to take us 45 days to get paid and um, not 30 days because things are going as well and we need to figure things out. And we're going to give people a little bit more leeway. Um, I don't know. I'm just playing with things. And that's what we're doing right now with these scenarios. We're looking through what's happening. What's my best guess? And then I'm creating more scenarios so that I can just see and I can figure it out and I can work with my team and decide what do I need to do? How do I need to do it? And what's possible? And what do things look like? And if I need to get a loan, so right now things aren't looking so bad. They're only looking like I need $7,000 of cash versus $27,000 the next year. Maybe things aren't looking so bad and I can add a line of credit or I can add a loan and I can add it all in right now. Obviously, I need to continue to play with this back and forth and back and forth. Is it likely that my club dues can still be $189,000? Probably not. Maybe I have to go in there and make a few more adjustments here and assume that the um, churn is going to be a little bit more than 20%. Maybe we're going to have a 30% churn in the beginning here and we're just not going to be able to change that and that's also going to change my revenue so now i'm coming back and you can see instead of 189,000, it's 177,000. um now i've got to go back into my financing and now i need thirteen thousand dollars to make this business work this fiscal year fiscal year 2020. so before we end because we're getting close to the top of the hour here i also promised that I would give you some information on SBA loans and what's available right now. So the number one thing I'm going to tell you, um, as you play with your scenarios, as you get some financial scenarios that you feel like you can live with, you're basically going to be ready and have the information you need to apply for SBA loans that are available. We wrote a whole blog post, and um, if one of the Palo Alto software employees who's on the webinar can copy that in and send it to everybody, um, you'll have the information on how to apply to an SBA disaster loan. Now, here's the one caveat that I will tell you. There is a lot going on right now with not a lot of detail and information. Certain states are have declared states of emergency. That's the states that have SBA disaster loans available to small businesses. 
Not every single state is a, it has these funds available yet. Our assumption is all of the states will. You're also probably hearing in the news that there's going to be some federal funds for, through the SBA to help small businesses even more. There's a lot going on right now. There's not as much clarity as we would all like, but we will continue to update you and give you clarity and give you information so that you know where you can come and where you'll be able to get certain assistance. There's going to be a lot going on with community banks. So if you live in a town and you go to a community bank, that's a smaller bank, um, not a credit union, a community bank versus a Wells Fargo, community banks are looking to ways to help their small businesses who are their customers. They're probably going to allocate some funds to some loans specifically for you. The big banks, the Wells Fargo's, the Bank of America, they too are going to be doing something to help you out. So the biggest thing I can tell you is there will be some financing available you will be able to get some loans and some credit lines, but you're going to have to have your financial scenarios ready. You're going to be, have to be able to show what you're doing, how you're changing, and what is your immediate recourse to a path to keep your business doors open. And the way you do that is with Thought Plan and creating all these financial scenarios. The last thing I'm going to show, because I promised I would, is any time that you can put in your expenses as a percent of your revenue, you're better off. I said this a little bit, uh, maybe 10 or 15 minutes ago. It creates an automatic budget that you have to follow. Gym expenses are all the kind of office gym expenses that this gym spends when they have to buy new, um, you know, those towels for wiping down equipment the sanitizing things, um, a lot of different things that they buy. Instead of just saying, oh, I'm going to spend $3,000 a month, this, this actually creates a budget. I'm going to spend 7% of my overall revenue. If my revenue goes down, my budget goes down, and i got to stick to my budget. So think very carefully about creating expenses that are tied to overall revenue. Now, obviously, rent, you can't do that. Your rent is your rent is your rent. And you can see in this scenario, I have not changed the rent. Now, that being said, you should definitely be calling your landlord because landlords do not want you to close. And there may be some negotiations that you can do right now to maybe pay a little bit lower rent, but keep paying rent. The landlord does not want you to go out of business because you won't pay any rent and no one else is going to be moving in right now. So think about your expenses your rent, your insurance, it may be a great time to look at other vendors and do some negotiations. Um, we're three minutes over, and I apologize. I don't like to um, go over time, and I want to respect everybody's time, but I really do want to make sure that you know that we have a passion to help you. We understand it's a stressful time, and we're here to help you. Please respond to the email. Let us know how we can help you. Let us know what other things you want in terms of education, how to, information, and we'll put our team together and get that information to you. At this point, um, I think I'm going to sign off. Um, Lauren, I don't know if there's anything else you want to throw in for everybody. Um, just a little plug to contact your local SCDC for some additional help around um, loans and, and some free resources um, on this topic. I think that, that's always a good thing to keep in mind. Yeah, that's a great point, Lauren. Uh, SBDCs are really uh, trying to react, and I know they've all had um, calls with the federal office and the SBA, and they will be getting information on a daily basis with what's available. So um, really good point, Lauren. All right. Thank you, everybody. If, you answer, if your question did not get answered, we will answer them. We'll go through all the questions. And again, Lauren at LivePlan.com. You can always email me, Sabrina.Parsons at PaloAlto.com. Um, or you can just respond to the email that you'll get sent with this recording and 